to a private eye. You want to be talking to Jim Rockford? That's right. He's the one to talk to. They don't know who you're talking to. R-O-C-K-F-O-R-D. He's got everyone talking. What kind of low life is he? Takes out half-page ads in a phone book. I seem to recall a phrase, moderately intelligent private detective. You have a smart mouth. You're right. You're right, I do. But I'm working on changing that. Jim Rockford is all the talk on MeTV. He's something else, all right. Weekdays at 11, 10 Central on MeTV. Hi, I'm John Malos, and welcome to this edition of Connect With Me, live on the showroom floor at Ventura TV. Back live here uh, after a week off the air because of technical problems. We're back on there. 436 Me TV is the telephone number. Today we have a terrorism expert in the house, and your phone calls are encouraged. 436 Me TV. And we're back here live on the showroom floor at Ventura TV after a week off the air because of technical problems. Thank you for all the emails and the phone calls. You know, I didn't know so many people watched our television network here. Gosh, thanks a lot. And I didn't realize so many cared about our show, Connect With Me. Thank you very much for voicing your concerns, and we're glad to be back on the air. And today we have a terrorism expert. But before we get to that, uh, a couple of notes. Um, Jack Wiegand, he's the 20-year-old that wants to fly around the world solo, and he wants to see his name in the Guinness Book of World Records. He had a slight problem, of course, in the last day or so. He forgot his passport in Fresno, and so he couldn't get out of Canada. Finally, they UPSed his passport to him. He got it. He's flying. He's en route to Iceland right now. As a matter of fact, he'll be landing in Iceland in about 25 to 30 minutes from now at 11 o'clock our time. So next week, we're going to air our segment, our one-on-one -on -one interview with Jack Wiegand. He's a 20-year-old that wants to put his name in the record books. As mentioned, we got a terrorism expert in the house today. And, you know, whether or not you want to believe it or realize it, or maybe you just want to shuffle this off to the side and not think about it because you're raising kids, you're working, you're going to the gym. There are thousands and thousands of people out there around the world that are constantly targeting you me, us, the country of the United States of America, they want to terrorize us. They want to, to do damage and harm to us and our families. And so these are considered terrorists. There's so many terrorist plots each and every day. I don't know how our government keeps track of it. The latest one and the only one since 9-11 took place in Boston. Let's roll the videotape. Of course, you know about it. Three were killed, including an eight-year-old boy. We had Sally Lovejoy in here from uh, Visalia not long ago. She was running in the Boston Marathon, saw everything unfold in front of her. First, it was the first bomb. Then, about 30 to 45 seconds later, maybe even less time than that, the second second went, one went off down the street. There were so many injured, had their legs and arms blown off. More than 180 people were injured. There you see the scene in Boston. And then you had the two suspects. Of course, they are brothers, Tamerlan Zerineyev and Jokar. Tamerlan is dead. He died in a shootout with police, or did he die because his brother Jokar ran over him? Not sure about that one, but the dispute remains as to what to do with Tamerlan's body. It remains on U.S. soil. His mother and father have been banned from coming into this country. Jokar still has his injuries. He is in detention. Of course, they read him as Miranda rights after he volunteered information about the plot during the Boston Marathon. We all know that they wanted to explode uh, these backpacks or have them go off during the 4th of July celebrations. Well, live in our studio right now, is Dan Payne. He is a terrorism expert who at one time worked for the U.S. government as a terrorism expert. He's a former Marine, 23 years in the Marine Corps. He now owns his own company. He is also 
a sniper expert. Our phone number here is 436-ME-TV. Dan Payne, he is a terrorism expert. We're going to be talking about terror and those who are trying to kill us. Each and every day they are plotting. Who knows, maybe they're mixing up the formula in somebody's backyard or a garage someplace. Very typical. 436-ME-TV. Dan Payne is our guest. Back in a moment. Frigidaire. We introduce the first home freezer, the first pulsator agitator washer, and now we introduce the Frigidaire Orbit Clean Dishwasher, designed with a unique wash arm that gives you four times more water coverage for a consistently better clean. Frigidaire, over 90 years of legendary innovation. See the full line of Frigidaire appliances at Ventura TV Electronics and Appliances. You know, it's interesting, uh, during my lifetime, we've had two terror attacks on U.S. soil. The first one was back in 1993. I was living in New York City at the time, and that was the first of World Trade Center bombing. Remember, they drove the truck underneath the, uh, the World Trade Center tower. Not sure which one it was, if it was one or two. The bomb went off. I think six people were killed back on that day uh, in 1993. And, of course, we don't have to mention 9-11. We all know about that. And then... Obviously, the, the, I guess there were three. Uh, the third one considered a Boston. Three people were killed, including an eight-year-old boy. Today, we have a terrorism expert in the house, Dan Payne. Good to see you. It's good to be here. Thank you so How much. How are John. you? I'm doing real fine, thank you. Yeah, good to see you. And so, I get, you know, I said two just a moment ago, but actually it's been three. Uh, the first one since 9-11 was Boston. But prior to that, they attacked the World Trade Center twice. So am I correct, correct in saying that each and every day, every minute of the day, terrorists are plotting against us. Right. There's, uh, there's literally thousands of, uh, of attention getters for the different organizations that are out there. And there are so many different organizations now that are involved uh, in, uh, in counterterrorism. Uh, of course, we have our, our FBI, the CIA. We also have DIA. We also have... Uh, uh, there's Homeland Security. Homeland Security. There's private groups that almost every president uh, initiated a group uh, for uh, that was prior to Homeland Security, uh, and they called it whatever. But Reagan had a group, Bush had a group, Clinton had a group. All these groups that were put together by by presidents. Plus, you have within our law enforcement agencies counterterrorism uh, experts within our law enforcement. So we have a lot of, lot of different agencies out there. For instance, uh, you know, CIA has detained uh, close to 3,000 people in, in foreign countries uh, just in the last few years. Uh, because since 9-11? Yes, yeah, since uh, because of uh, terrorism uh, activities. Uh, we have terrorist uh, camps that are within uh, the United States and some that are outside the United States. Uh, we track a lot of these different groups. Um, a lot, just like they were talking about how the brother was uh, reported to the FBI. Uh, you know, uh, we've learned a lot since 9-11, and we're, we're making a more uh, conscious effort to uh, share the information between the CIA and FBI, because uh, had they done that prior to 9-11, to it was very possible that we, we may have been able to prevent 9-11. All right, we're talking Dan Payne here. He's a terrorism expert. Our telephone number is 436-ME-TV if you want to join the conversation. There's a lot that you know. There's a lot that you can say, but obviously there's a lot you can't say right. because of what you know. And if you told me, you'd probably have to kill me, right? Is that <laughs> yeah. it? And every, everybody on the air, right? <laughs> everybody on the air. So, so uh, what, what's the latest now on the Minnesota situation? Uh, U.S. government uh, thwarted an sure. attack there, a potential attack. Tell, right. us, tell us what that you was, can. Uh, <laughs> right. That was uh, done about three to four days ago. Uh, the FBI uh, had information. They were watching this guy for a bit. Mm -hmm. uh, he had collected uh, an enormous amount of, of weapons and was planning not only to use them for himself, but to provide them uh, for other organizations. Uh, so, and, and, you know, you've said that, that there's been about three attacks uh, in the U.S. since 9-11. Since Actually, there's 50 attacks that have been made uh, on, in the U.S. Uh, since 9-11. Uh, and the majority of those uh, can be traced to uh, a specific organization. Which is what? No, Al-Qaeda. Uh, Al Al-Qaeda. Yeah. Al yeah. Is that part of the jihad movement that we all 
yes, about it is. and talk about? It, it was actually started years ago uh, as a volunteer force uh, out of out of Arabia, and and uh, then Bin Laden and others got involved and started. Uh, actually funding it but it was a bunch of volunteers who got together and al-qaeda actually translated means the base uh so why minnesota though minnesota is not a major metropolitan area like a new york or a chicago or los angeles right because it, it doesn't make any difference really where the area is uh, a lot of times they'll choose these areas to organize and then they'll move somewhere else and actually do the attack you know, terrorism isn't always a physical thing. It doesn't mean I have to physically hurt somebody. A lot of times just the mental uh, anguish is, is terrorism uh, and just keeping people on their toes at all times and, and uh, not letting them relax and breathe and say that all is well. You know, out of the 50 that, that, uh, that we were able to deal with since 9-11, uh, there's thousands that... Uh, that we get to prevent prior to them taking any action. And then there's even hundreds of thousands that gain our attention that we watch on a daily basis and we assign people to them, they investigate them while there's other things right. still going on. And it, it's just, it's, it's huge, it's yeah, huge. It's like, a, it's like a Ferris wheel, always in motion. That's the right. US government is always in motion right. trying to detect any kind of terror activity uh, on our soil. 436-MeTV is the uh, telephone number here talking to Dan Payne. I wanna put up a picture of Richard Reed Remember him? He was the shoe bomber. Well, we thwarted that attack there. There is a picture of Richard Reed right there. So, I mean, you know, did the U.S. government get him or did he get himself? Was he just a dumb jihadist? Well, we, we depend on, on people to make mistakes. Uh, he made a mistake. Most, yeah, he did. And, and we, we uh, plan on that a lot of times and, and hope that that's going to help us. Uh, but... Uh, just like, you know, the brother that was reported a couple of years ago, uh, you know, there, there's a lot, of, a lot of people that are already suspects that we're, we're watching. Um, you know, and we weren't watching Richard no, Reed. No, this one we weren't, no. No, no so luckily for us, yeah, yeah he made a, he we're made lucky. a mistake. Yeah. We're lucky with him that he was a dumb criminal. Right. Absolutely. All yeah. right, got a phone call here. Good morning. You're on with Dan Payne, a terrorism expert. How are you? Thank you. I'm great. It's great, great to have you back on the air again, John. Um, I got a question for your guest, Dan. Uh, we're talking about domestic acts of terrorism, and my question is, uh, do you think we're ever going to get to the bottom of this Benghazi controversy? That's one question I have. And the other question is, international acts of terrorism against the U.S., the U.S. military, U.S. citizens, embassies, et cetera, et cetera. These also get tallied and tracked, no doubt, but I don't think the American public is aware of how much unrest, how much, uh, uh, how many acts of terrorism are committed against our military and our uh, civilian uh, embassy corps uh, worldwide. Can you address Benghazi and international terrorism acts against U.S. Sure. citizens? Those are Thank two you. great, great questions. Thank you. Uh, the Benghazi, uh, I don't believe that we're going to get to the bottom of it. Uh, Why? Because I, I believe uh, that... Uh, People at that level, such as Hillary, uh, the, the the president, um, you know, th those people, they're 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 never going to fully disclose what was going on and why they did what was they did. Was that a terrorist act? Oh, absolutely. I, okay. I, I believe it was. It was. Why won't they fully disclose it? Well, because we had Americans die there. Right. There's there's a problem with labeling something terrorist uh, terrorist activity. Uh, you know, I hate to say this, but even to those that are killed or injured, uh, their compensation is based on whether it's labeled a terrorist attack or if it was just part of the job type thing. Wow. Uh, and it's amazing that it goes down to that. But if you read some of the early documents of, of Benghazi, you'll see that that came up and then it was immediately squelched because they didn't want to talk about that anymore because that's pretty insensitive to say we're not going to do that for the sake of... of yeah, initially they had said it was a, a something that went off uh, during a celebration. Right, right. And then they backtracked off that, right. of course. But we actually know that that like for instance when i was looking at what was going on in in boston there's certain things that happened that let me know if 
if they're part of a large organization. Do you think they are? No. The two brothers? No. They I, acted alone? I think they acted alone. I think they probably had discussions with organizations or maybe they... Uh, they, they well, Tamerlan went to Russia for six months. Maybe right. he hooked up with some organizations over there to learn how to make the bomb, uh, to learn how to uh, go undetected for so long, these types of uh, I, things. I think that that's possible, but I, I don't think that they... Uh, used him to do that. I think it was maybe something that uh, he and his brother, actually his brother first, had been uh, you think way Cameron involved Long in this. You think kind of recruited his brother, Jokar, right. at, at into the, the group. And, right, yeah. at the last, it was, at the last minute. Yeah, it was actually at the last minute. Yeah. Although he was already uh, a target for the FBI, right. uh, you know, 18 months or so prior to that. Yeah. So we have a lot of good information on, on these guys. Quickly, before we go to break, could Boston have been prevented? Could we have done a better job in, in tracking this guy? Um, I don't. I don't believe so. I, I think it's easy to look at at situations and backtrack and try to see where we could have done something. Uh, but if you're going to start doing something like that, I mean, second it, uh, guessing. Yeah, yeah. You know, Super Bowls, concerts, things like that. How do you? How do you screen everybody, you know? And these guys are getting very inventive, as, as we saw the shoe bomber, the <laughs> underwear bomber. These guys are constantly yeah. coming up with yeah. new ways of, of uh, causing destruction. All right, got to take a break. Uh, Dan Payne is our guest. 436-ME-TV is the telephone number here. We're back live after being off the air for the better part of a week. Hope you can join us. Back in a minute. Weeknights on MeTV. Who loves you, baby? You shouldn't ask. It's Kojak. Well, it sounds like music to my ears. On Me TV. Look at me. Why do we love him? Maybe it's the way I call my hair. Or maybe it's his trusty right hand man. Small bite. Cracker. 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 Kojak. <laughs> well, I, I just wanted to hear how it sounded. Telly Savalas is Kojak. Story of my life, baby. Weeknights at 12 30, 11 30 Central on Me TV. Who loves you? All right, Dan Payne is our guest here. He is a terrorism expert. He also spent 23 years in the military uh, as a U.S. Marine. Uh, he also worked for the U.S. government at one time. Uh, he now owns his own company. He is also a sniper expert, an expert in silent kills. What does that mean? Uh, being able to, uh, to take somebody out without them making a noise. Uh, so there's a lot of times where you're tasked with having to take someone out and, and you, you don't want them to, to yell, scream, uh, gasp, whatever. So right. there's different ways of So of you're an expert on how to do that. Yes. Uh -huh. Unbelievable. Yeah. And so you're a sniper expert as well. I, I assume you've had a few sniper kills in your Correct. time. Correct. Um, and 23 years as a Marine. Right. Amazing. Uh, before we get into the second part of our caller's question, uh, tell us about the story. Now, you were scheduled to go to work for Bush One. Correct. Who was in office. Correct. And then Clinton came into office. You had a meeting with uh, President Clinton. Tell us how that went. Uh, the, uh, the feeling of, of the Clinton administration was uh, to get rid of air defense uh, missiles to begin with, uh, and now you met with, with him where in the, in the Oval Office in, at D.C. Yes, uh huh, yes, at the you White were in House, the White yeah, House uh -huh. in the Oval Office, yeah. one on one with right. President Clinton, right? And what did he tell you? Uh, <laughs> that uh, <laughs> when I disagreed with him, that he didn't ask, uh, he didn't ask for my my uh, you know my opinion. Um, oh, when you told him your opinion, he, right. his response was, "I didn't ask." <laughs> yeah, so uh, it was it was at that time that I met with uh, George Radonovich, who was uh, my yeah. congressman at the yeah. time, and I I asked him to uh, to get me out of this, out of the Marine Corps, and he said, "Do you want out of the Marine Corps? Or do you want out of these orders?" And I said, "Believe me, if I don't uh, take this this assignment, I, yeah. I'm done." Uh, and he managed to keep me in. In fact, I, I had to request three times to, to retire, and the Marine Corps kept saying no. They wouldn't Qu let me quickly, out. Quickly, tell us what kind of a guy President Clinton was when you met with him. Uh, on business or what? No, he's uh, very, uh, well, yeah, he, you know, I was expecting a welcome aboard, good to see you, uh, you know, is everything, you know, how's your stay, whatever, nothing like that. 
No. The, the very first thing out of his mouth was, uh, I don't even know what you're here for by the time we, uh, but, you know, by the time I get done, we're not even going to have missiles in our arsenal. And I was like, wow, okay. You know, I, I don't really, you know, I, I don't agree with that. And he yeah. said, I didn't ask. So. Yeah. Very cordial, though, huh? Yeah. Very, very cordial. Yeah. Uh -huh. you know, yeah. Nice guy. Yeah. He actually was. He's, he, uh, you know, it's really funny that <laughs> if you don't know him, uh, his facial expressions and his eye contact would lead you to believe that he is the most sincere, passionate man or whatever. He's got eye contact. Oh, yeah, huh? but but he does. He, he is. Uh, it, it's amazing. You know, uh, Sharon <laughs> Patterson, uh, Jim was out of town uh, when he was mayor, and uh, Clinton came uh, to Fresno. I remember that. Yeah, and yeah. Sharon went to go meet him, and, uh, and I was with her. And as we walked up there, uh, you know, uh, Clinton was talking to some of his guys and the comment that he made was you know where are we going next when are we getting out of this podunk town <laughs> and Sharon's right behind him and hears him make that comment and the the guys he's talking to are kind of giving him the eye that there's somebody behind him and oh he turns my. around and sees Sharon and he puts his hand out there and and tells her oh what a joy it is to be here and what a lovely <laughs> you know city and you know what a warm reception and she even said had I not heard that, I'd have actually believed that that he meant, you know, what he said about our city. Unbelievable. Yeah. Hey, let's get to the uh, second part sure. of the question on the caller. He said about international uh, terrorism groups uh, targeting us right. overseas, including the military. Right. Does that go on? Yes, it does. The the uh, the largest groups that that work on counterterrorism overseas are CIA and DIA, which is the military version of CIA. So it's a defense intelligence agency made up of military personnel, and all the military units have uh, counterterrorism. Air Forces has a great uh, counterterrorism organization, and they've been right. uh, they've been. Um, uh, accredited with a lot of thwarting of, of uh, terrorist activity. So besides the, the Taliban, Al-Qaeda, how many other terror groups are there out there oh trying gosh. to kill us? There, there's so many. There, there, if uh, You can actually go online. Can you put a number on it? Um, gosh, you know, I think recorded-wise, uh, gosh, I, w I just looked that up the other day, as a matter of fact, because they're always adding to the list. Uh, but there's over a hundred. Uh, are there? Are they all Muslim groups? No, there there They're are not. no. You know, um, they still consider the Aryan group a, a terrorist group. They still consider the, the KKK as a terrorist group. Aryan nation, you're talking right, about. Right. Yeah. Okay. Uh -huh. So that you know, all these groups, because again, the the definition of terrorism is, you know, uh, instilling terror. You know, right. whether it's mentally, whether it's physically. Uh, you know, whatever. So a lot of these groups are still. So it's not only the Muslim and the jihad movement no. that's after us. No. You've got the white supremacist groups, the the Aryan nations, like right. you said, and the KKK is still on the radar. Yeah, as as a as a terrorist group. Yes, they are. Unbelievable. Talking to Dan Payne, he's a terrorism expert. Doesn't get much better than him. Four three six Me TV is the telephone number. Back with our program in a moment. Ventura TV Appliance Center. We're the low price leading brands reliable advice place. The Whirlpool Dream Kitchen Get Yours Today Place. Check this out. Right now, get huge savings on select Whirlpool appliances and pay no interest when paid in full within six months. At the hometown low price, think outside the big box place. Since 1951, Ventura TV Appliance Center, we're working hard to be your place. All right, back with our uh, terrorism expert, uh, uh, Dan Payne. Let's talk about the underwear bomber just quickly. Put a picture up on the screen of the underwear bomber. His name is Umar Farouk Abdul Mutalab. That is a mouthful, but there he is, the underwear bomber. How'd we get him? Uh, that was another one where uh, these guys make a, 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 you know, a simple mistake that, yeah. that draws attention. Uh, he was uh, on the radar already, so uh, oh, unlike, unlike, the, unlike Richard right, Reed, this right. guy was on the radar. Yes, he was. Yeah. So, so this guy made an, another dumb mistake, right. like many of them do. Right. And and what was that mistake? Do you think he just uh, uh, it, it didn't go off? Is no, it didn't. It didn't go off. He yeah. tried to trigger it, right? So it and, go, it and it did, didn't, didn't go, go off. off yeah. yeah. You know, uh, out of the fifty attacks that we've had, uh, terrorist attacks that we've actually uh, had. Uh, you know, actually take place. 
uh, over over 40 of them uh, were you know uh, accredited uh, to jihad and and al qaeda and all. So it, it is a, a big uh, portion of of our terrorists. All right, you worked in the U.S. government. You were a former Marine. You're a terrorism expert. I know you know Raymond Kelly, the mm -hmm. police commissioner in New York City. Mm -hmm. Let's go to the monitor and the videotape. We're going to roll it here. And this is New York, obviously. Um, they have the most sophisticated system, anti-terror group, probably in the entire world. Talk about it, because you've been there. Yeah, you know, this is a, I think New York is probably one of the most um, trained and well-equipped police forces uh, aside from Washington DC if you go to Washington DC you'll see that there's the DC police and then there's another police and actually another police uh, but New York ha is very uh, uh, well trained they have a, a lot of state-of-the-art equipment there uh, as you saw the guy had a thermal uh, register in in his hand and a lot of subway cars right. in New York City the subway system there this is uh, we're looking at uh, terrorist activity here here's some training by the right. NYPD here right a lot of discussion going on they're, they're always talking to each other uh, in a real situation uh, a lot of times your your conversation is is uh, is totally uh, mute so you can't you can't talk to each other even with with uh, with uh, the um, headsets and all because you don't want to give away your position or whatever so during practice there's a lot of talking right. that goes on uh, and then in a real situation there isn't yeah. uh, and it's got to be instinctive before we run out of time I want to go to the command center in New York City uh -huh. because this was the brainchild of Raymond Kelly the police Correct. commissioner we'll go to the command center you've actually been inside the command center right uh, what yeah, are we looking some, at here? something similar to this yeah and there's yeah, Raymond there's, Kelly standing there right there's uh, there's people that are assigned to look at the screens uh, and all they're doing is is looking at all these screens we have them uh, here in our area um, uh, and what they're looking at there are cameras located all over, all over. the city of New York right. and this is the command center for that correct and we have the same thing uh, with a lot of the cameras that we have Caltrans has them as well uh, I've been to the one up in the Truckee area uh, huge screens up there and it's just a room with wall-to-wall -wall screens and there's people sitting in there and they're monitoring these screens at How all times. How monumental a task is it to protect not only New York City but some of the rural areas of our country like Fresno, mm -hmm. uh, California, many places are rural in this area here mm -hmm. too um, and other parts of the country. How big a job is it? Is it almost impossible? It is and that's why you know you were saying uh, is you know, are we able to to defuse a lot of these or thwart a lot of these? You know, we depend a lot on people's mistakes. Uh, we depend a lot on on other people's information to us. Uh, it's it's like impossible. the Times Square car exactly. bomb. It was someone who detected some unusual activity right. that thwarted that attack. That's right, and and we depend on that a lot. We don't have uh, enough eyes and, and and ears to to cover everything. Uh, so we depend on on a lot of people uh, community watches even neighborhood watches you know a lot of those groups uh, can really uh, I mean heck look at the the situation with the girls that uh, had been kidnapped and, and trapped in this in guy's house yeah. yeah you know for how long it was and and y you wonder you know if they had a better neighborhood uh, you know watcher or, or knowing your neighbors you know could that been revealed a lot it was sooner. almost like a freak incident that right they were that they were they were discovered right by a neighbor that's right you know so we're uh, we depend a lot we no matter uh, how many uh, TV screens and cameras we have a lot of those are great to explain what happened after the fact the company you work for now mm -hmm. is what is cable links uh, okay and what is what is your job and, and what does the company do well you know we do a, a myriad of things uh, but we've uh, you know we're, we're a construction telecom company but we also do uh, the entire United States Marine Corps computer software analysis for the entire Marine Corps uh, we invented a, a fiber optic uh, flexible splice that the Marine Corps uses in a combat environment. Um, uh, for a while there, we assisted another company in, in uh, arms, international arms dealing. Um, so th we, we do quite a bit. Yeah, so you're still in the terrorism aspect of this whole thing. With the, yeah. the, the, the TVs and, and yeah. all, yeah we, yeah, we we can play a role in that, yes. Yeah, so Dan Payne is watching. 
Eyes are on us and you. Dan Payne, good to see you. Thank hey, you. come back. You're our terrorism guy now. I appreciate it. I'd love to come back when right. anytime I can help. We want you on here as a regular. My you friend. got it. All right, that's Dan Payne. Hope you have a great weekend. That's going to do it for us. Back on Monday with Dennis Hart, formerly of KMJ, and George Hostetter, currently of the Fresno Bee. Have a great weekend. Like me? Just like me. Like Me TV Fresno on Facebook. Get the latest news, interact with others, watch videos, become a fan of me. Exclusively brought to you by Ventura TV.